Hello, Venture friends. Thank you for joining us to worship our God this morning or tonight or whenever you're watching this. We're just glad you're here. And so we want to take a moment to just ask God to be in our presence, to tell him we want to bless him, and to thank him for his blood, for that is the only thing that cleanses us of our sins. So, Father, we thank you so much. Thank you that you chose to come down to us and, and do what you had to do, to die on the cross, be resurrected, so that we could have an eternal future. So thank you, Lord, for the blood that washes us clean. And so we just ask, God, that you would do that right now, wash us clean, cleanse us whole. Father, we say that we are yours and you are ours. So we worship you today in spirit and in truth, in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing about the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part and this I see. Nothing but the blood.
everyone. I love to be able to get up here and say hello to you wherever you are out there. I hope you had a very blessed week. I love to remind you that we're a family adventure and you can connect with us um, one of three ways. Um, you can text us at 602-775-6398. You can email us at office at theventurechurch.com and you can always go to our website at theventurechurch.com. You can get our prayer re- re- requests to us. You can get your um, praises to us and you can also do online tithing as well on our website. So let me pray for you. Dear Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to spend time um, to gather in your name. We love and praise you. I just pray for each person here, each person out there, each family, Lord. Bless them, protect them, guide them, um, and fill their hearts with your word, Lord, that we may be one together in your name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Venture Church. My name's Pastor Joel, and I'm thrilled that you made the decision to join us for worship today. This month, we're beginning a brand new series called Give Thanks, Exploring Gratitude. I love the month of November. How about you? In fact, I I think it's my favorite month. Why? Well, Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. Now, more than just the pumpkin pie, I love the emphasis on gratitude. It's it's a really, really incredible time of the year for us to focus on being thankful. So how about we warm up? Let's start off with a story today. It's a story about an elderly English pastor. Now, this pastor, he was an awesome guy, but he was especially famous for his prayers, his pulpit prayers. He, he was he was known for always having something wonderful to thank God for. Well, one particular Sunday, it had been a really difficult week in the life of the community. There had been deaths, and there was a drought, and there were just all kinds of difficulties. Even in the pastor's own life, there was trouble. And so on this particular Sunday morning, one of the members of the congregation remarked to a friend. He said, well, the preacher's going to have a hard time finding something to be thankful for today. So on that Sunday morning, the pastor began his message with a prayer. His prayer sounded something like this. He said, we thank thee, O God, that it's not always like this. <laughs> well, that's good news, isn't it? You see, the truth is, there, there's a lesson behind that story. And the lesson is this. There is always something. Always something to be grateful for. But it's a choice. It's a decision that we have to make. The decision to be grateful. The decision to be people who choose to give thanks. Well, today we're going to explore a really important theme within gratitude. It's the question, why? I mean, why should I be thankful? I mean, sometimes it seems like nobody else is thankful. Why should I be thankful? Why me? Well, for us as Christians, for those of us who believe God's word and take him seriously, he's the answer to the question. The why is God. He's the simple and most important answer to the question. Let me share a verse with you this morning from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. The Bible tells us to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You see, an attitude of gratitude, the the decision to be thankful, It's God's will. It's what God wants from all of us. But not just when things are going well, but in all of our circumstances, even in the midst of our difficulties, God wants us to choose to be grateful. Now, this month, we're going to dig deep into that theme, and we're going to explore the the who and the where and the how 
and the why of gratitude. Choosing to be grateful even when things are hard. Why? Well, let's consider an individual. Perhaps you've seen him on YouTube videos, or maybe you've even been to a venue where he was speaking in person. He's the the most remarkable example of this truth that you'll ever meet. His name is Nick Vichek. Nick was born with a a rare physical deformity, a, a deformity that left him without limbs. I mean, imagine life without arms or legs. Now, I've heard his testimony. He he says on his journey toward making peace and finding gratitude in the midst of his hard life, he said the first step was overcoming his anger. He decided that instead of being angry for what he didn't have, he shifted his focus to what he did have, and he became thankful. He, He realized that in the midst of all of his pain, somewhere deeply buried in all of it, was something to grab hold of, something to be thankful for. L- listen to, to one example of something that Nick learned about gratitude. He, he would write, he said, I never met a bitter person who was thankful or a thankful person who was bitter. Amazing. Now that's a big why. That's a big reason for gratitude. Do, do you want to be a, a bitter person or do you want to be better? Nick found his why. He didn't want to be angry. He didn't want to be resentful. He didn't want to be bitter. So he chose gratitude. That's just scratching the surface. There are so many other reasons. Let me give you just a few of them this morning. Number one, there's a likability factor. Grateful, thankful people are fun to be around. Do you want to be likable? Do you want to have deep and long-lasting friendships? then choose gratitude. Number two, your health. There's a health factor. I mean, do the research. Increased cortisol, blood pressure, sleep issues. The list goes on and on. Do you want better health? Choose gratitude. Number three, there's a character factor. I mean, the the most amazing people in the world are people who choose to be grateful in the midst of trouble. You know, thankful people are are people who are not always thinking about themselves. It's it's one of the great character qualities of thankful people. They're selfless. They're humble. They think of others. But there's a fourth one. Let's simply call it the enjoyment factor. I mean, do you want to be miserable in life? I mean, there are a thousand things to complain about. There are a million things to be unhappy and and to see what's wrong in the world. Do you want to be miserable or do you want to be happy? Thankful people are the happiest people on earth. There, There are just four reasons, four examples, but there are so many more. But let's let's move on to our story today. I want to take you on a journey. Remember, we are exploring gratitude. So this morning, I want to take you to the book of Exodus. And I want to show you the opposite of gratitude. It's a great case study. It's a great example for us to study today. The opposite of gratitude, call it grumbling, complaining. It's the story of the ancient Israelites in Exodus chapter 15. Let's begin by reading a portion from chapter 15, verses 23, 22 through 25. In verse 22, we begin. And then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert without finding water. And when they came to Marah, they couldn't drink its water because it was bitter. That's why the place is called Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses. And they said, well, what are we to drink? And Moses cried out to the Lord. And the Lord showed him a piece of wood. And he threw it into the water. And the water became fit to drink. So let's put the story in perspective. The Israelites are just three days 
from the greatest water miracle of all time, the Red Sea. And now here they are facing another water crisis. And all they could do was grumble. Shocking. I think that God led them to the bitter waters of Mara because he wanted to give them a taste of their own bitterness, an experience of what it felt like from God's perspective. And it didn't taste good to hear their grumbling and their complaining. But but let's read on. Let's move to the 16th chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning in verse 1. And now the whole Israelite community set out. And it was on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. For there we sat around pots of meat and we ate all the food that we wanted. But you've brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Can you believe what you're hearing? It's only been 45 days since they left Egypt. That's a month and a half. And already their negativity, their grumbling, this, this horrific attitude is discoloring everything, even their memory. They're delusional. <laughs> They're remembering Egypt, you know, like it was a paradise, like it was heaven on earth. But it wasn't. But, but let's read on. In verse 4, And then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. For in this way I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. And on the sixth day, you tell them, on the sixth day they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So God has given them some clear instructions. He's testing them. And what he's telling them is, I'm going to provide bread for you, but take only what you need for each day, just enough. And on the sixth day, you are to gather twice as much. Why? Well, so that you'll have time on the seventh day to tell God, thank you. You see, the seventh day was a day of worship. It was a day of of expressing our gratitude to God. See, it's really important. It's important to God that his children learn to tell him, thank you. Now, some people don't like that about God. Some some people accuse God of of being a a crazy pathological egotist. They they accuse God of being a a, a megalomaniac. (laughs) I mean, crazy. You might ask, and you might have even wondered, why does God want us to tell him thanks? So answer this question. Why did your parents make you say thank you? Was it because they were some kind of pathological egotist? No, it's because good parents teach their kids to say thank you. Because saying thank you is the right thing to do. It's polite and it's courteous and it's thoughtful. It's the honoring thing to do. It's the right thing to do. And God was teaching his children to tell him thank you. But let's read on in verse 6. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said. You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want. In the morning, he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Boy, there's a powerhouse of a lesson here. When we complain, when we complain about anything or anyone, we are ultimately complaining about God. Whether it's your job or your spouse or your house, your car, your paycheck, to complain 
It's to question God. It's to bring an accusation against God, his goodness and his wisdom and his power and his provision. Oh, there are many, many things you can do about your problems. You can you can pray about them. You can work on them. You can try to improve them. You can find new jobs and and go to marriage counseling. And there, there are all kinds of things to do about your problems that are good. But complaining is never the right choice to make. Let's continue in verse 13 as we finish out our story this morning. For that evening, quail came and they covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? They didn't know what it was. And Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. And then in verse 31, the people of Israel called the bread manna. It was white like coriander seed and tasted like wafers made with honey. Amazing. They, they woke up that first morning and there it was all over the ground. And not a single one of them said, thank you, Lord. No. What should they have done? Well, what they should have done, if, if like grandma's, remember, everybody's grandma used to say, if you don't have something nice to say, then don't say anything at all. But what did they say? They said with a, with a tone of accusation, what is it? What is it? You know, I only know one Hebrew word. And that Hebrew word is manna. You know what manna is interpreted by? You know what it really means in the Hebrew language? Manna simply means, what is it? This was some pretty awesome bread. That's what it was. It was the bread from heaven. It was the provision from God's hand to their mouth. But, but notice what it was like. It, it, to me, it was kind of like a cinnamon roll every morning. Yet not one of them said, thank you. Not one. And that's not right. Complaining and grumbling. A, a, a lack of gratitude and thanksgiving in our life. A, a thankless life. Guess where their grumbling was going to take them? Certainly not into the promised land. It would send them back into the desert where they would spend the rest of their lives circling the mountain. Complainers were going to go nowhere. See, this attitude of, this attitude of ingratitude, it's a really big deal to God. A thankless heart has some lethal consequences, maybe more than you could ever imagine. I, I was thinking of, of how to say it to you, and I want to say it to you like this. Ingratitude is the gateway attitude into a whole horde of destructive thoughts and foolish behaviors. Now, that's pretty strong language. Ingratitude is a kind of gateway attitude that that leads you down a pathway, a destructive and dangerous pathway. Let me prove that to you, not only from our story this morning, but Let me tell you about two scriptures, two really shocking scriptures in the Bible. See, the Bible explains how this world of ours got so mixed up, how this world of ours has become so messed up. And the Bible says that it's rooted in thanklessness. Let me show you where it says that. In the book of Romans, chapter 1 and verse 21, the Apostle Paul says, that the wrath of God is coming against all wickedness on this earth. And here's what the Bible goes on to say. The Bible says that, that even, though, even though these people knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him as God. And as a result, their thinking became futile. Their foolish hearts were darkened. Do you see it? This ingratitude, this thanklessness of the world has led them into a whole horde of destructive thoughts and 
foolish behaviors. And that's what's happening today. The farther that God gets pushed into the margins, the less people honor him and recognize him, the more evil the world becomes. In fact, the Apostle Paul will say to the letter of Timothy, 2 Timothy, the Apostle Paul will say that thankless people will be one of the key characteristics of the last days. Let me show you. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, and then there it is, ungrateful and unholy. Amazing, isn't it? It's a big deal. So the question that we're exploring this morning is, why should I be thankful? Why should I make the choice for gratitude? Especially when there's so much wrong in the world. Until you can answer that question. Until you can answer for yourself your own why, you're going to be stuck. I'd like to share with you Four of my own. I, I spent a lot of time this week asking that question, why? Why should I be grateful? Why should I be thankful? And here are four answers to that question for me. Maybe one of them will spark you and, and grab hold of your heart. Maybe it'll become yours. But for me, the answer number one is this. Why should I be thankful? Because life is a gift and not a right. Life is a wonderful gift from God. No matter what life deals you, every single day we all awaken. We awaken to this wonderful gift of life. I mean, have you ever pondered the the untold blessings that God has given all of us? I was thinking about some of the blessings of life that that I love so much. I, I love the dark just before the dawn, when no one else is awake. I love that first sip of coffee and a hot shower. I love hearing my phone ring and seeing it's one of my kids calling. I I love going for a walk and holding my wife's hand. I love a a beautiful full harvest moon. I, I love gazing into the stars with my wife and and having her explain the constellations to me. I love, I love the fellowship of men on Wednesday nights. I love going to church on Sunday morning. I love the taste of fresh bread and raw honey. The list goes on and on. I could talk to you for an hour about the wonderful blessings of life. And it's all a gift. A gift from, a gift from above. The gift from our creator. And what kind of person would I be if I never said thank you? Thank you for the gift of life. Are there problems? Of course there are problems. Is life hard? Of course it's hard. But look around. Look up. Life is a gift. And I want to live my life telling God thank you every single day for this gift of life. Number two, reason why I should be thankful It's God's perfect plan for me and for you. It's it's, it's the way he has wired us. Sometime you should do a study through the Gospels. And you should think about the number of times that Jesus prays. Almost every time that he prays, he prays with a gratitude, with a thanksgiving, whether it was for the food when he, when he multiplied the bread and the loaves and fed the, the multitudes, whether it was in the garden as he was praying for this to be removed, his suffering to be removed, he was filled with gratitude. You see, God has wired us. God has made me. He has designed me to choose gratitude, to be thankful. Reason number three Why I should be thankful is this. Life could always be worse. When when you thank God, when you think of your life, 
problems and all, it wouldn't take long as you look around to say, well, yeah, I've got troubles, but I'll stick with my own. The list goes on and on as you think about the things that people go through. And then you think about your life and you quickly realize that it could always be worse. There's always, in every situation, in every circumstance, there are things in your life for you to be so deeply grateful for. It could always be worse. But finally, number four, and, and this is a big one for me. Why I should be thankful? Because there are people that, that need you to be thankful. There are people that are depending on you. They're looking to you and they need you to be grateful. They need you to be thankful. It's, it's a world where people are struggling, people are feeling hopeless, people are wondering, what's the future going to bring? And they need us. They need us to be, to be people who see God in the midst of, of life's difficulties. They need us. They need us to bring good news to them and not despair and hopelessness. You know, it, it makes sense to me. The Apostle Paul's command to us, as the church. You see, the Apostle Paul said to us in the, in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, he said these words. He said, I want you to do everything without grumbling or complaining so that you might become blameless and pure children of God without fault in this warped and crooked generation. And when you do that, he said, you will shine like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of truth. Are there days when I feel hopeless? Are there days when I feel like giving up? Absolutely. But there are people in my world, there are people in your world who need us. They need us to to carry the message of hope. They need us to believe God, to trust God, to walk with God, and to be a shining light in this dark, dark world world. Hey, I'd like to do something a little bit different this week. As we launch our series, I, I want to bring to you a challenge every week. Now, this specific weekend, I have a seven-day challenge for you. I, I want to call it a seven-day no-complaining challenge. No complaining. Now, I don't expect perfection. I don't, I won't get it from myself. I certainly don't expect it from you. But what I want you to do this week is I want you to grab a notebook. Maybe call it your, your gratitude journal or your Thanksgiving journal for this month. And I want you to grab hold of that journal. And, and I want you to record your progress all week long. I want you to listen to yourself. I want you to listen for the complaints, for the grumbling. And then I want you to not give yourself any excuse. There are no excuses for complaining, none. And and I want you to don't even rephrase the complaints. You know, don't put a spin on them, a kind of a happy spin. Well, I'm not really complaining, but I mean, none of that. It's a no complaining challenge. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the things that are bothering you. I want you to take the complaints and I want you to pray about them. I want you to to bring those complaints to God with thanksgiving. That's what the Bible tells us to do. To pray, to, to worry about nothing, but to pray about everything with thanksgiving. That's an incredible way to live your life. Imagine Imagine this week as you ponder and think about no complaint. Hey, let me give you an example, an incredible story I happened upon this week. It's, it's the famous story of Robinson Crusoe. And, and the book records that being wrecked, shipwrecked on this lonely island, one day Robinson Crusoe, took his own journal, and he wrote two columns. and He listed the good and the bad of his situation, which essentially is what I want you to do this week. 
he realized on the one side that he was cast away on a desolate island, but he was still alive. He was separated from humanity, but he was not starving. He had no clothes, but he was in a warm climate and he didn't need them. He had no means of defense, but he saw no wild beast that threatened him. He had no one to talk to, but the ship, the, the ship was destroyed near the shore and he could get all of the things necessary for his basic needs. And so he concluded that no condition in the world was so miserable that he could not find something to be grateful for. I was thinking about that this week, that there is no situation or circumstance that I can't find something to be grateful for. So I pulled into the gas station. You know where this story is going. You look on the pumps this week, and what do they say? 359, 369, 379. Our immediate reaction is to complain. Complain about the price of gas. Is it valid? Of course it's valid. But is there any benefit to it? What what good does it do for me to to come home and complain to my wife, complain to my friends, to text them, to share pictures about the price of gasoline. Well, what's the benefit? Perhaps it'd be better to choose gratitude. Like I thought to myself, well, (laughs) I'm thankful that it's not 4.59 or 5.59. Then 3.59 would look pretty good, wouldn't it? Or I'm thankful that it's still available. Now, that would be a real problem, wouldn't it? Or I'm thankful that I still have enough money to even pay for it. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. The choice is ours. We can either fixate and focus on what we don't like and complaining and grumbling about this world, or we can focus on God. We can put our trust in him, and we can let thankfulness be the, the, language, the language of worship. And we can trust God in the midst of it all. But you know, the, the bottom line for me is this. The reason why I choose to be thankful is I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy in my wife's life. I don't want to be that guy in, in the life of my church family. I don't want to be that guy to my children and my grandchildren. You know what guy? That guy that always carries around that old complaint. I don't want to be a downer dad or a a downer granddad that always talks about everything that's wrong in the world. I, I want to be that guy who tries to look through the maze and the fog of all of life's garbage. And I want to see God. I want to see God's hand. And I want to grab hold with both hands. And I want to proclaim the goodness of God in the land. I want to proclaim that he has not abandoned us. And that he loves us. And that we please him and honor him when when we choose to live a life of gratitude and thanksgiving. I choose to be thankful. Because I don't want to be that guy. I want to be God's guy. I want to proclaim his good news. I want my life to be filled with the joy of the Lord. And I know that that's your desire as well. So I've brought a prayer as usual, a prayer that I wrote that I want to invite you to pray with me. This prayer comes out of my heart, the desire of my heart to be that guy. So would you join me this morning? As we call upon the Lord together, let's pray. Almighty God, thank you for the blessings in my life. I'm overwhelmed by your goodness to me. I want you to know that I'm even thankful for the difficult things that have come my way because in them I see your hand at work. Today, with a grateful heart, I offer you my sacrifice of thanksgiving. Help me to change my attitude from one of ingratitude to gratitude because you deserve all my praise. I open my heart 
And by faith, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior and put all of my trust in him. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, the Lord bless you, and thank you for joining us. And we're going to have a wonderful week together, a wonderful month together as we explore gratitude. So the Lord bless you, and don't forget your no complaint challenge. Seven days. Can't wait to hear from you next week. God bless you, and we love you guys. 